Welcome to the speech contest. Southwest Division Toastmasters con uh, contest today. So before we get started, uh, my name is Satish Chandrasekhar and I am the contest chair. And, and I do have some ground rules. Uh, everybody has got a mobile phone which is growing bigger and bigger day by day. Could you put it on vibrate or on mute? Or if you don't know how to do it, uh, put it off. And if you're expecting an emergency call, stay at the last of the row or on the aisle so that you can go out and take it. There's some refreshments and water. Please go ahead and pick it up right now so that when the speech contest is going on, uh, you know, we maintain absolute silence here. And um, I do want to, uh, you know, express gratitude to uh, Helen for giving me the opportunity here. I wanted to read through the um, Toastmasters mission. The mission of the Toastmasters Club is to provide mutually supportive and positive learning environment in which every member has an opportunity to develop communication and leadership skills which in turn foster self-confidence and personal growth. So before we move on, I, we do have a, a Toastmaster for the evening. I'm going to introduce you the Toastmaster for the evening. The contest Toastmaster for the morning, uh, morning is Tang and uh, he joined Toastmasters in the fall of fall about 30 years ago. So during this past 30 years in Toastmasters, he has won four district contests, he has three of which were evaluation and one for table topics, and he was also honored as the Toastmaster for the year in 1990. He has delivered educational sessions at many District 30 conferences as well as international conferences. He was a founding member of the Windy City Professional Speakers and Advanced Toastmaster Club focused on participating of preparing its members for careers involving professional speaking. He has held numerous club officers and district roles and is currently serving as a president for Windy City Club. <coughs> he has accomplished trainer and he was a president for both the Chicago Sales Training Association and the Chicago Land Chapter for American Society for Training and Development. With that, please help me welcome Stan Bisoski. Start, look down and go, son of a gun. I was looking for water and suddenly one magically appears. Is this someone? Did someone put this here? I'm taking it as an offering. Pardon? Is there more water in there? Is there more? There's, no, there's just one box. So. Good morning, everyone. And I'm going to stay here on this wonderful lectern. Look at this. How many of you know you can roll these things? <laughs> when I was asked to be the Toastmaster this morning, well, I wasn't asked this morning, when I was asked to be the Toastmaster, I thought about the fact that it's been a really long time since I've been a Toastmaster at anything beyond a club meeting. It probably been somewhere in the vicinity of 15 years, and maybe even longer. And over that period of time, lots and lots have changed. So I was a little concerned about whether or not I could do this because I'm out of practice. And I was assured by Helen that even an idiot could do it because there's even a script for everything I'm supposed to say. <laughs> so I figured, well, I'm an idiot. I can do this. It shouldn't be that hard. Um, I'd actually like to do something a little different than most contests, I think. And that is, you know, every Toastmaster event to me is a learning situation. And if you've never been to a, a division contest before, perhaps you don't know how things work. So I'd like to get a feel for the audience here. And because I always tell the speakers in my club who say, could I see by a show of hands that that's such a cliche? 
we're going to do something different. I'm going to ask everybody to put up their hand, please, one hand. Now what I want you to do is, if you have never been to a district contest, put down your hand. Okay, if you've never been to a division contest, put down your hand. So we have everybody here that has never been to a division contest? Has never been to a division contest, put down your hand. So the, everybody here has been to, everybody with their hands up has been to a division contest, and those with your hands down have not ever been to a division contest before. Frank, I know that's not true for you. Right. <laughs> so following directions is a challenge. So we have about half of the, everybody can put down their hands down. So we have about half of the people here have never been to a division contest before. And with that in mind, rather than just doing this, because my job, the work I do is I train people. I'm a sales trainer for Canon USA. Not the camera side, the business equipment side. Um, and so what I'd like to do is to, to have this be sort of an open book for you on to how this actually works. So that someday in the not too distant future, you can be a Toastmaster at a contest like this. So the first thing is, the good news, like I said, is that there is actually a script. This is a big change from the old days. I, and I say the old days. I've been a member of this thing for almost 30 years. And when I got in, I looked around at a lot of people that had been around for 30 years. I said, who in the world would do that? <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that out. And I also find myself in the weird situation of being, when I was a relatively new Toastmaster, as, as Frank will admit, Frank is a past district governor, um, around the time that I joined. And I was the, I was the person who questioned the status quo. And now I'm in the uncomfortable position of defending the status quo. So it's a very big change for me. Uh, so today we are going to have two different contests. We're going to have the humorous speech contest and the, and the speech evaluation contest. And the first thing that we do before we do all of that is we introduce the dignitaries. What in the world is a dignitary? And someone who's, owned, who's, who's earned some Toastmaster props, if you will. And uh, we usually start with the current international officers, and we don't have any of those here. But we do have our current district officers. And so please acknowledge, if you would, our district governor, Joan Moore. You must be doing a good job. Yay. Um, our Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, Michelle Cabello. It's all good. Okay. okay. Listen, with my last name, I've learned, you know, mispronunciation goes with the turf. I don't even go by Stan anymore. Just call me Stan. It works really well. And the uh, Lieutenant Governor of Marketing, Donna Weston. We also, of course, have our own division governor, Helen McCullough. And we've got some spies in from other divisions. We've got the Northwest Division Governor, John Lab Labia. And our North and a North Division Governor, Ethel Cody. Now, I'm not going to go through and read the list of all the area governors because it's a really long list anymore. So could I ask all the area governors who are attending to please stand up and then let's acknowledge them. <laughs> so those are our current officers. Now, I've been away from this or from the district and divisions for a long time, so I may miss somebody. I only know of one past district officer that's here. That's Frank Geyer, past district governor. Could you stand for that? Right. Sorry, that was a short joke, you know. Those of us who are short always react to that one. 
Are there any other past district governors or any, anybody, anybody that I missed? Hey, good, we got through that. So one of the things that I noticed as, as part of doing this is that some things have changed. And one of the things that's changed over time is that it used to be that the chief judge would stand up and go through the rules and well, that was a really boring part of the contest. So there's a big space here that says, the chief judge will not be called upon. It's like, okay, that's a good deal. So to, to summarize everything up, the contestants, timers, ballot counters, sergeant in arms have all been briefed prior to this contest. Everyone is aware that the Toastmaster <coughs> International rules govern this contest. And one of the things that we ask is that no one leave the room while the speeches are actually going on. This includes the target speech, um, as well as the evaluations, and of course our humorous speeches later on. Um, because of the fact that we do have one minute of silence during the evaluation, while the judges are marking their ballots, um, during that period of time, people are allowed to enter and, and leave, uh, enter and return, I'm sorry, enter and leave, Probably they would leave and then enter. And uh, then, then, but you've only got a minute. Fortunately, the restrooms are right outside the door and you're to your immediate right should an emergency arise. Are there any questions by the members of the, of the audience about what we're doing and why and all that kind of stuff? Well, in that case, let the contest begin. First task is for those of you who are keeping your keep or watching along and playing along at home, uh, is to give you the order of the speakers. You all have the agenda, at least I assume you all have the agenda. Does anyone need an agenda? Does anyone not have one? Okay. So our, uh, our first speaker today is Chuck Yeager, who flew in quickly. Anybody old enough to get that? But I'm Bob. Good. Um, second speaker is Kathy Antoine. The third speaker is Press Vasili Vasilev. He's a member of it now. Uh, Tom Parker. And John Harris is the fifth speaker. Tell my, I'm, I happen to be a mentor for a brand new club called Peace Toastmasters, and I tell them every contest has a, uh, or every time you do a Toastmaster meeting, something will go wrong, and you're just supposed to learn from that. And I learned something, and the thing I learned is I don't know the speaker's title for the speech, so uh, I'm going to ask her to tell us. Is it? It's on there. Wait a minute. Well, if it is, I don't see it. So wait, let me just see here. T the other drink. Say again. T the other drink. T the other. Oh, good. I can like that topic. Okay. So please welcome our target speaker, who our our evaluators will be listening to and giving feedback to, Joyce Joyce Shumpert. T the other drink. <laughs> to a game. Well, the SMU women's rowing team had to <laughs> go another level and did that, but they did that with their legs. Oh. 
So this has become really popular, this current popular song. It has now even been arranged for an orchestra and a choir and done on the Today Show. And another thing I wanted to mention, with the Harvard Boys Baseball and the Women's SMU rowing team, they also had a show battle on the Today Show to see who did it the best. And then recently on my Facebook page, I saw a poster that said, hey, call me crazy, um, but pet my belly, but call me, oh, I'm sorry. Hey, I just met you, but this is crazy. Here's my belly, pet it maybe. <laughs> this has gone out of control. Now, there has been many parodies of this song. It started out with Justin Bieber, Cookie Monster has done it. <laughs> Jimmy Fallon has done it. And even, I just saw one with a nun in it. Now, what is this world coming to when a popular song called Call Me Maybe by Carly Rae Jepsen can go this far out? It's crazy. How can you calm down? Well, one way you can do it is with a tea party. <laughs> tea party makes you calm down, you can invite your friends and family, you can have fingers, sandwiches, sweets, and tea, and drinking the tea you have to slow down. It is so hot that you have to wait for it to cool down before you can drink it. Well, supposedly tea came, up, tea came about in 2737 BC when an emperor in China was out surveying his land and somehow or other some dry leaves got into his pot of boiling water and he tasted it anyway. Well, soon after it spread all over China and then went to Japan and then we all know about the Japanese tea ceremonies where geishas tra trained for years to be able to um, serve a pot of tea that's most perfect, most polite, most gracious, and most charming. Well, in 1560, tea made it to Europe, but it was only for the rich because it was $100 a pound. But by 1675, it had gotten less and was being served in food shops. And the two countries in Europe that really uh, made tea what it is was Europe, was um, France and Holland. And Holland was started the tea gardens. Well, England got tea in 1652, and they were the ones that really elevated it to a new level. And it became so popular it even um, passed the national drink, which was ale. And they started tea parties, which they were in formal gowns, men and women got together, they went under floral walkways, they had orchestras and concerts and games. And it was also the first time that women could mix socially with the opposite sex in a public setting. And also, when the middle class and the um, upper class were, free, were able to freely cross, cross lines and become friends with each other. Well, the um, United States got tea in 1690, and the first tea house opened in New York City. Well, by the 1880s, Victorian tea parties were really popular in the United States and England, and fine hotels were serving high tea. And this high tea was a way for men and women to get together in the afternoon and to converse and have tea with each other. And they had to have everything, a full set of tea parties, or tea set. They had to have the saucers, the cups, the pots, the jugs, the strainers. They had to have it all, and in the latest styles, colors, and also other businesses started getting into the tea thing with linen manufacturers, silversmiths, and potters. Well, Tea has another thing. It's very health. It's very health for, for you. Tea has gone from a billion dollar um, sales to 5.6 billion dollars, and it's because of the health benefits. 
They have found that tea helps your immune system <coughs> faster than it does with coffee, and also the white blood cells work faster to get the germs off you better than coffee does. Now there are many types of tea parties. There's the afternoon, the full, the royal, the farmer's tea. The afternoon tea is where you have like your sandwiches and sweets <coughs> and tea. Then you have the farmer's tea, which is very popular in England in the pubs where you have highly grain bread, cheese, sausages, fruit, and a sweet. You have the royal tea, which you add champagne or sherry to. Then you have the light tea, which is just scones and tea. And let me give you a hint. If you prefer lemon, you cannot add milk to your tea. <laughs> the, milk, the lemon will curdle the tea. So next time you want to get together with your friends and family for a relaxing time, have a tea party. And then also, do your own Call Me Maybe <laughs> parody. <laughs> Sergeant and Arms, please accompany the contestants out of the room. Well, the first thing I'd like to do is to give our target speaker another hand. This is a challenge. And of course, one of the things that we need to do here as the Toastmaster, as the, as the group here, is to kill five minutes while all those people are doing their evaluations and preparing their evaluations. And so one of the ways that we can do that is to find out a little bit about our target speaker. So Joyce, I'd like you to come back up. First of all, as a tea drinker myself, I'd like to personally thank you for giving that presentation. It is nearly impossible at gatherings to find tea, even though it is, has become such a large industry. And uh, I recently had my, my daughter, who's a 16-year-old, recently gave a tea party with the little cucumber sandwiches and everything. So most people would be out going to concerts and stuff. My daughter's having tea parties. I can't figure it out. Um, and I've also heard with, about tea that we should just put green tea in the water. We'd all be healthier. <laughs> so there may be some truth to that. Now, you come to us from District 54. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Which is, and so do you know the, where District 54 is on the Illinois area, where in the world of Illinois? I know, I think it starts like in Aurora and goes out towards, well, goes towards the Quad Cities and Bloomington Normal. I'm not quite sure. It's most of what we call downstate, <laughs> which is everything south of I-80, I think. And I think it begins officially at the Fox River, although I know we have some Aurora clubs that meet on the other side of the club, the Fox River, that find their way into Fox, into District 30, is that correct? All the district officers are going, yeah. <laughs> and which club are you with? Oswego. Now, for those of you who don't know where Oswego is, does anybody not know where Oswego is? Oh, great. Would you tell us where Oswego is? And you are farther away than that even, right? Yes. It's, um, it's on 34, but it's, it's past Naperville or Aurora, the Aurora area. But a lot of people moved into Oswego because they worked in Naperville. So it's kind of a suburb of Naperville is where. As we well, you know your you know your city is big when the suburbs have suburbs. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a bad case. Um, I found.
found it interesting, one of the things that, that you've done is you've gone to improv training at Second City. What in the world inspired you to do that? Um, I wanted to be funny and, and wittier. And so they had, they were, the Paramount and Aurora was having some classes there. And so I took some classes there. And I was encouraged by one of the um, instructors to go. And I knew there was one in Arlington Heights. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll go there because I was too nervous to go down to the downtown. He's like, no, you have to go to the downtown one in Old Town, which was, even growing up in this area, it was my first introduction to the neighborhoods in Chicago, which was so neat, it really was. Old Town is a very neat neighborhood, and their art <laughs> is wonderful. I always find it interesting when I talk to suburbanites who've never been into the city of Chicago. Because so, well, I, I lived in the city for a long time, and it's like, yeah? <laughs> yeah? I've been downtown, but I've never been to the... Never been to Old Town? Neighbor, never been to the neighborhoods, because we always just went downtown. So not a fan of folk music in the old days, right? <laughs> um, okay. Um, well, there it is. The speech title is right there on the bio. <laughs> Son of a gun. <laughs> I was looking for that and couldn't find it. What do you know? Um, why, why did you bother to volunteer to do this? Um, I, want, I wanted to speak in front of other people. In my club, you get comfortable speaking to the same people and over and over again. So I really wanted to go way out of my box to be able to speak. And I'm trying to be more accountable to things in my life, and Toastmasters is one I'm trying to be. Because I've been at Toastmasters for many years, but I've been you know? about six. About I've six? Seen, but I've always seen Three. it as, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it as more sociable. I kind of went as more sociable, <laughs> trying to become a better speaker, and now I'm trying to not do as much sociable and become a better speaker. Well, I think that you will find that, uh, as a friend of mine has said, you will continue to get as much out of Toastmasters as you are willing to put into it. And by putting into it, by being a, a target speaker, I think you've gotten a little bit more today than you've even asked for. <clears throat> Five evaluations at once, yeah. that'll be fun. <laughs> and we'd like to thank you so much for your participation. Oh, you. I have no idea what's in there, so I don't think it's a bomb. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you. Well, the, th the thing we have to wait for is for the sergeant at arms to show up with the first person at the uh, at the, uh, in the entrance to the room. So now, what do we do? It's not in here on my script. How do you bam? Give me twenty seconds. Pardon? Give me twenty seconds. Oh, okay. Come on up. All right. These contests are being taped for eventual distribution to the internet. They will be made publicly available after the conference. If an individual competitor needs to view themselves with their speech before the contest, I will make the link privately available to only contestants who are going to compete ahead. See me after the thing if you desire to get this. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. That would be the thing would be the contest. <laughs> Are we ready? Okay. Okay, so. It's about 15 seconds to the other room. Okay. Okay. Our first contestant, Chuck Yeager. Chuck Yeager, our first contestant. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and especially uh, the speaker. We just witnessed a, a, a great speech. It, it was informative and started out funny. I, I, at, at the beginning of it, I didn't know where it was going to go. It started with our movements, which was great, in which we, we thought there would be a dance or a cheer or something going on that, that we really were about to chuckle and laugh a lot about. Me personally, I've never heard of that, that dance. I, I remember hearing about the, the Korean sensation that, that did some type of dance, but not that one, uh, from the Harvard basketball, uh, uh, baseball and, and uh, 
another club or team. I felt the speech could have gone in, in, in several different directions. It could have stayed on the theme of, of the cheers and movements and gone with maybe the Macarena or, or some other funny thing that could have got us all involved and brought up the memories of the electric slide and, and things like that. But it, it chose to go in a, a totally different direction in transitioning to T. Now, the T part, I thought that was fascinating. It was almost like watching uh, uh, the History Channel to find out more about T. Uh, I, I felt it could have been tied in more to the fact that we had coffee as an option, and, 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 and with the title it being the, the, the other type of uh, drink, the uh, tea, it could have, could have been uh, contrasted a little bit more why it's better. But he did mention a lot of good things about the teas. He mentioned something about the white blood cells and that how it's good for us. And, it, and <coughs> the, the top part about the tea I thought could have gone in other directions as well as an alternative if he just focused on the tea history. Uh, he could have gone with uh, the Boston Tea Party, talked about that. Uh, the, he could have, could have gone into politicalness of uh, tea parties. Uh, he could have also gone into alternatives to tea, which you know, coffee and, and other drinks. But overall, uh, looking past the, the tr awkward transition from hand movements to tea and concluding with a little bit of the, the hand movement songs, I felt uh, the speech w was a very good speech. He had a lot of good things that I really liked. He, he gave us good eye contact. He made us feel welcome and a part of your speech. We wanted to learn more, and it was interesting. Uh, I felt the, the um and ah counts were, were a few, so it wasn't, wasn't bad. Uh, the, uh, another uh, thing was you, you distracted us with having your glasses in your hand. I felt that, that was, that's something easy that you could have not done. And, and of course, with over preparation, of course we all don't need notes, but but you transitioned pretty well in that you didn't stay with the notes and, and look down on it. You forgot the, the key quote and went back to us. So overall, I, I felt it was a great job. I think adding the Cookie Monster in with uh, uh, the the Macarena and, and the electric slide would have been a nice way to tie it together. But thank you very much. Sit down. May the, with the toast and with the timer, give me one minute so that we can give the judges time to mark their ballots. Our second speaker, Kathy Antoine. Kathy Antoine, our second evaluator. <laughs> shooting at the range. So you hit, you hit the topic with me. I was a little confused at the very beginning with the introduction. Partly because 
I probably I don't have any teens that I'm really familiar with, so I didn't know, I didn't have a reference on the song, or I hadn't seen the video. But I could see that other people did connect with that. And I could tell that because of the laughter that I heard and the, the, the chuckles. So I was having a hard time figuring out. I heard the title, then I heard this introduction, and then all of a sudden we transitioned to talk about tea. So I don't I would challenge you maybe on the next speech to tie it in more with what you were gonna speak about. But some of the things that I really loved was you could tell you had done your research. She had a definite beginning, you know, the body of it, the history of it, then she moved on to the benefits of tea, and you even gave us a little tip, you know, make sure you don't put the lemon in the milk because you're going to get some curdled, curdled tea, so that was good. I liked your eye contact, I liked your gestures. One of the things I thought you could have handed up a little bit, when you talked about the Victorian era, you could have just, you know, pretended you were a woman with one of the fancy dresses or something like that. I think that would have added some visual appeal. You kind of tended to stay a little bit here in one spot and plant yourself, which, you know, that's something that you can work on is the, the gestures and maybe using the stage a little bit more. The other thing that I saw was um, the use, you, were not, you had notes, and you, you kind of looked at them a couple times, but if you're giving a presentation, I think it's perfectly acceptable, even if you're doing it from memory, to say, you know, I have a quote I want to make sure that I quote it correctly and just have it written out on an index card and read it word for word. And I think that goes a long way with the audience to make sure that you're giving the quote accurately. And it, I don't think it takes away from your speech at all. And I thought it was just a, a really good speech. The ending came a little abrupt as you tied back in that introduction and you talked about how it was calming. I thought you could have come up with a few more benefits as far as maybe how today um, it brings people together, we'll talk a little bit more about that, and how it really does slow down and give you time to talk with other people over a cup of tea. And it's a whole new avenue maybe for some in here, but I thought she gave us a wonderful introduction and informed us about the benefits of tea. Our third speaker, Prez Vasilev. Prez Vasilev, our third evaluator. Well, thank you, Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, and especially our tea expert, Joyce. What a start! Have you seen this? I was immediately drawn because he used the power of curiosity. What's following next? Let me pay attention. Joyce, you had great research. Wasn't she knowledgeable about her topic? Yes. You've researched the history of tea, and you did something amazing. You organized your speech and your research in a chronological way so that it's easy for the audience to follow your ideas. Very well. You had a great voice and you projected your message way over to the back and that's so important in a big room like this one we are today. Great job there. 
How can we make it a better speech? The power of the pause to help you when you blank out is so important. Next time, when you cannot remember your next idea, just pause. And if you can still not remember, just leisurely, casually, look at your notes and continue. No need to apologize. Use the power of the pause. Another suggestion is, I notice that you carry the glasses in your hand throughout the entire speech. And that can be distracting from your message, and it can also prevent you from using gestures, such as pouring tea at a tea party. Gestures can add visual aspect to your message. And finally, use more of the stage. And you had that opportunity. When you talked about China and Japan, well, let's go to China and Japan. Come to this side talk about the origins of tea in China. It wasn't until 16th century when tea became popular in Europe. And later on, in 19th century, it was popular in New York City and America. That way you come closer to different aspects, different parts of the audience. But Joyce, what a great research. What a great voice. You have such a great potential to be a speaker. You're so knowledgeable. When you remember to use the power of the pause, when you remember to use more gestures, and when you remember to use the stage, you will advance as a speaker. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready to have a tea party. <laughs>
flowing right up to the 17 and 1800s, right now up to the modern day. We're talking about tea has become a $5 billion industry. It's a, definitely a shocking statistic. And it also lets us know that we've progressed through the body of the paragraph if we've ended back at the modern day piece. And the last part was your conclusion. And I think it's important in conclusion to draw the beginning and the body of your speech all the way back together. And you did that with the topic of the uh, <laughs> make tea maybe catch line, which of course was the actions. Okay. Now if you give the speech again, or perhaps in future speeches, a couple of things that I'd really like to see you take on to really bring yourself to the next level is with your body language. I can tell that you're a person who likes to speak with your hands, and I'm sure I've been doing the same thing here subconsciously. But to go ahead and take that subconscious and make it a conscious decision to do specific actions at specific points in time in your speech. Perhaps with the finger food, so you're talking about your tea party, or of course with tea, the classic pinky up, something of that nature. Uh, that can be a difficult thing to just take on and start doing. Um, so what I've done in my speech practicing, and I would suggest you do, and if there's anybody else here who's done the same, is to keep your speech in front of a mirror. It'll really let you see what you're doing, how you look like, to perfect those facial features, and to perfect those hand movements. So all in all, it was a great speech. Thank you very much. Our fifth contestant, John Harris. John Harris, or the Skyway. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, guests, and especially Joyce. Joyce, I've been a tea drinker for years, and you told me a lot of things about tea I never knew. I enjoyed especially how you started out with the history of tea, telling about how it was first discovered by accident, then covering how tea went from one country to another, through France, through Holland, eventually to England. I liked especially how you used that tea was perfect, polite, and charming. Those are very effective words to give a positive impression of tea and motivated us to continue drinking it. I also liked Joyce the way you covered two different aspects of the evolution of tea. I like how you covered the social aspects, how it was the first time men and women gathered together, and it gave a chance for the middle and upper classes to gather together. And I like how you then covered the business aspects of tea, how it developed the, the industries for linen, for cups and saucers, etc. You told us a lot about history of tea, but the way you said it, it wasn't just a dry, boring history lesson. You gave us a lot of interesting facts about tea. You obviously have researched it extensively and you know your material very well. There's a few things I'd like to suggest doing differently, Joyce. One of them is that during the speech, you had your glasses in your left hand the entire speech. Possibly you could have set them down on the lectern or not had them with you. This would have allowed you to better balance yourself in your gestures. Another thing, Joyce, <coughs> I would suggest that when you are covering the health aspects of tea, you mention that tea is a very good source of antioxidants. Because that's a, a common thing with tea, and it's a very good motivator for people to drink tea. 
Joyce, another thing I would suggest is that you organize your speech just a little bit differently. You very effectively covered the history of tea from its origins to the present. And in the middle of it, you covered the health aspects, and then you continued with the history, and then the call to action. I would suggest that you instead cover the history completely, and then cover the health aspects, then go to the call to action. The reason I say that is because the health aspects would be a very good motivator for people to drink tea and to organize an event, an event gathering friends. So Joyce, overall, you did a very good job. You were very well organized. You're very knowledgeable on the subject of tea. And I especially liked how you ended with the call to action to people to get friends together. So Joyce, you did a very good job overall. And with those few improvements, you would be even better. Mr. Toastmaster. We're just waiting for some outstanding ballots, or even average ones. <laughs> <laughs> as old as you are. It is. <laughs> I think I heard it back in the 80s. But it was new to somebody. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's really sad.
the contest, and that is the judges. So please give them a round. Because you have to focus too much as a judge, it's a little too tough. Um, I see on the agenda that the next item here is the Toastmaster is supposed to say something about the District 30 Fall Conference. And since I don't know anything about the District 30 Fall Conference, I think I'm going to call <coughs> Michelle up to do a great job telling us about it. Thank you. October 27th, which is a Saturday, when you are going to be at the Willowbrook Holiday Inn. Why? Not just because they have great food, which I'm looking forward to. And not just because you're going to see the district contest of the evaluation of the humorous speech contestants, one of whom will be competing from this group, but because it will be super fun. And you're probably wondering, why is it super fun? For the first time ever, Moni, I know, wants one. Ethel probably does too. Who wouldn't want a District 30 lanyard? And you're probably wondering, why? Why would I want a District 30 lanyard? Because if you're an achiever, and everyone is an achiever, you're going to acquire many pins. And you can simply stick them on your District 30 lanyard and wear them. And if you are a multiple achiever, like many of you in this remark, it will be littered with beautiful pins, including if you have achieved your educational award between April 14th of last Toastmaster year and October 20th of this Toastmaster year, guess what you get? A brand new, never before seen District 30 Achiever pin. got his speech here in Chicago. They actually had the convention here in Chicago, which is a miracle, right? How often do they do that? In fact, next summer it's in Ohio. They miss Chicago again. Tried to tell them they had great pizza, but no. They wanted to see the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I don't know, pizza, Hall of Fame, which would you choose? But you can hear Craig and why he won and how he won the World Championship of Public Speaking three times. Now you're probably wondering, three times, wow. So three times. First, an exclusive presentation at the Achievers Breakfast. If you could wake up by seven o'clock in the morning and achieve an educational award in RSVP, you could get a lanyard, a pen, and hear Craig's speech, and if that's not all, get a yummy breakfast. Who wouldn't want to get up at seven for that? <laughs> I don't know. Stan. Okay, but that's okay, Stan, because we have more for you. For the first time ever in recent memory, we are going to be doing something very different. All of you know about the Distinguished Club Program. How many of you know about the Distinguished Club Program? Everyone almost, except for guests, which is okay, because you'll learn when you sign up with Toastmasters later. <laughs> what we're going to be doing is recognizing for the first time the presidents of last year, which is the achievement year, who earned a distinguished, select distinguished, or president's distinguished, either nine or ten points, will walk down a real red carpet with real lighting and have a real presentation for your trophy and achievement. That is pretty awesome. And not only for those club presidents, but after that, the entire club can take a picture in front of our D30, which you pretend to see here, right? D30, is that good press? D30 media wall, which is really cool. So you have a memento of the exciting event with your trophy. Now that's not all we're doing. We're also recognizing our district leaders from last year who helped us achieve our distinguished status, which we earned at the convention this summer in Las, wherever we were, Florida, Las Vegas, I can't remember. And right after that, we're having keynote speaker, Craig Valentine. So Stan can hear him in the afternoon after he is awoken. And that's after lunch. And then we will go right into the very exciting and fun humorous speech contest. And at that contest, right away after that, we're going to have dinner. And guess who's speaking again? <laughs> so you can hear him. We have a lot of really great prizes that I don't want to spoil. But keep in mind, you have to be one of the first 300 people 
to attend the fall conference to get your lanyard. So it is a limited opportunity, so make sure you're there early. Seven o'clock is good. And guess what? You're probably wondering, how can I sign up to go to the fall conference? You talked all about it. I have to go. It's easy, and in fact, we have an early bird special still running for another couple of days. You can just go to the District 30 website, the30toastmasters.org, click on the registration link right on the home page, and sign up your entire club for one low fee of $99. Now, you're probably thinking $99 might seem like a lot of money. I mean, after all, you could buy many lanyards <laughs> <laughs> or many fabulous pins. But think about this. It's for your entire club. So if you have 25 members, <coughs> if you have three members, well, okay, six members, you can pay just $99 and go. Now you're probably wondering, well, this is again too not commercial, right? Not so much. Basically what happens here is this. $99, your whole club can go. You can come and go anytime during the day. Stan, you can even come in the evening if you wake up then and have a lot of super fun. And you're probably wondering, wow, this is so exciting. How do I sign up? Again, don't forget, b30toastmasters.org, click on the registration link, and we will see you there at this exciting, super fun event. Stan. Well, now we all take a well-deserved break. Could I please see the speakers who are going to be competing in the next contest? Um, it's supposed to be about 10 minutes, which puts us at five minutes after, according to that clock, or do we need a little more time? Today? Less. Less. Five minutes after, according to that clock. Please take a break. Speakers up here, please.